We're going to move on to our next subject. Keep going through these things tonight. So we're going to talk about Loki a little bit. So this has been kind of a rumor going around for season two. If you've, if you've seen season one, you know about the whole timeline issue. They broke the timeline, and now the TVA is going to have a lot of issues. Kang is there now, and then Kang is kind of the new big bad for Marvel. Hence, we've seen in the Quantumania trailer for, for Ant-Man. And now they're saying that Kang is coming in to season two, season two of Loki. And here's what they're saying. Jonathan Majors recently filmed more scenes as the variant of Kang for Loki. This season will have more time travel, which makes sense. And Loki season two will introduce a new concept called Time Loom. It is the source of the TVA power. They use the energy from the time stream and they absorb it. So this is kind of where it's going with this. And the thing is, like, it makes sense that Jonathan Majors is going to be coming in for this. If you watched Loki season one, it ends with this. You had he who remains and they have that whole speech about I'm you think I'm bad. There's worse than me. Like, I'm here for a reason. And so it kind of sets it up. And then Kang comes in at the end. You see that big statue of him. And it's like, OK, well, the rumors going around is there's going to be multiple variations of this actual of, of Kang in this. So Jonathan Majors will be playing multiple characters throughout the whole season. They had a little teaser trailer that came out that was like only online. That was like at a it was at an event. So they never actually put it up officially where they showed them like running through Paris through time. They showed multiple Lokis in it. There was really some cool visual effects. And it's really it's centered around around this whole TVA and like what's happening now and with Kang. So I'm excited about Kang coming in. Jake, did you watch, uh, yeah. did you watch Loki season one? I I think I did. Yeah. I don't remember. With him and Sylvie, yeah. they had the, the female variant of him and they kind of, yes. it seems like they're falling for mm -hmm. each other, but then they don't. And then they had old Loki, which I thought was the best part when they go actually into the void and you see old Loki and you see Gator Loki. And um, that was a lot of fun. What was the one when he went into the, like the um, the headquarters of the timekeepers or whatever that was? Uh, yeah, that was with... Lo that the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Wow, how do I not? I watched the whole thing. It's but... been it's been a minute. It has been a yeah. minute since it came out. There's so there's a, dude, there's a there's a lot of Marvel content now. Like you can't be. I don't know. You can't be held accountable for all of it. I better not because I won't answer. I will. I will fail that test because yeah. But I liked that Loki show, and I remember there, there were, like, multiple Lokis, right? Yeah. Yeah, there, there was a bunch so, of Lokis. Like, there's female Loki, regular Loki. Uh, there was yeah. all these different variants of him that were actually in the void. Right. So, yeah, Loki was – there was there was all of the Loki in this. Wow. So this could get interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah the fact there's an, they're saying there's going to be actually more Lokis, like, sharing screen time together, I think that could be fun, too. Did, do, you, do you like Loki, though, in general? Yeah, I like him. I mean, he's like the mischievous. Like, I think he's that kind of character that would. Uh, he doesn't want to hurt anybody, really, but he does just to watch the chaos that follows. You know, that's like, a, that's something that you relate to, Dick. I don't know. It sounds like fun. Yeah, I mean, like you don't really mean anybody harm, and deep down, you want everything to be good, but you just can't handle it. Everything being okay. You know, like Look, where's the Loki fun? Loki kind of likes to watch the world burn. Piece. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, he is like the agent of chaos, right? Like Loki's supposed so. to be that in general. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, it's exciting that he's gonna another season. When I saw the first season, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. The, the way they led up to actually meeting He Who Remains at the end, and and I, I guess like I said, old Loki, Gator Loki. That shit was funny. Um, and I hope there's more of them, even though they kind of killed old Loki in the original season. Who knows? I mean, with the multiverse, anything can happen. You know, that's just anything can change like in a heartbeat. Um, Mike, you hear this. What do you think? Do you like Loki? Are you excited about a second season coming? First of all, I think that there's a strong argument to be made for Loki, the TV series being the best thing that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has put out thus far. Uh, I wanted to ask you quick, Brian, and maybe you too, Jake, you might be more on my yeah. side. Uh, I definitely always used to read comic books back in the day, probably more in the lines of the Ren and Stimpy and Simpsons comic books. Um, so it's only now that I'm kind of going back, doing some of my history and my, my homework. Or were, were you ever uh, embedded into any of the, the big publishing imprints? This is for Jake. We're going with Jake first. <laughs> oh, uh, no, I really wasn't. No, um, I think 
the, you know, there was uh, my first exposure to like comic booky kind of stuff was I'm pretty sure it was with Moose or Brian at, um, where I don't know, just like just randomly, right? Having comic books laying around and be like, oh, what's that? Oh, there's He Man, there's. Uh, I think Transformers was one, wasn't it? Way back in the day, yeah. originally. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I had like Ninja Turtle first... ones. Yeah, Ninja Turtle. I had X Files comics when I was younger too. Right. Um, I, a lot of the Marvel stuff. I had a lot of that too. But there was, you know, it's just I just it would vary. But I had so many different ones. I was the kind of kid that would go to the, the store and they had those racks that would spin, you know, and yeah. then I'd grab them. I really was obsessed with the Ninja Turtle ones. I know that for sure. And and that was just uh, as we have Krang. Behind my Casey right here, <laughs> not yes. King Kring. Eh, turtles. Oh. You know, <laughs> that's why. That that's shit. why I selected that. As soon as you, <laughs> as soon as you sent the Kang article, I was like, I have a Krang background. That yeah, would that's make awesome. Sense. <laughs> um, so, uh, so thinking way back to the possibly greatest uh, MCU event known, I remember that last episode was a little bit of a throw for me because what if it felt more like an after credit sequence like it seemed like everything that that last episode was was a setup for the next for the next season so like in some respect that's great i don't know if you if you wanted to put a nice bow on the end of your season it's not great um but if you want to get really excited and get the get the internet fanboy machine all up and frothing for your for your series, then that's a great way to do it. Um, Because Kang, I I don't know who Kang is, uh, except for my exposure in in that last episode. Although, if he is, you know, he's a being kind of sitting at the end. He was there at the beginning, there at the end. If he is also, if he is also has multiple variants, then that makes me think that we have to be in some kind of matrix situation where there's like, if, if, because if there's more than one of him and he was there through the whole continuity, then there's an extra layer up on the top that's, uh, that Keanu Reeves and Agent Smith are down looking at all the other Lokis and maybe they're like an additional Loki for these mm. Lokis. But maybe Keanu Reeves is actually a Loki too. Dude, if they bring, bring if they bring in Keanu Reeves, I'm gonna straight up lose my shit. <laughs> they really should. I'm surprised yeah. they haven't. You know, like bring him in, find a role for him. Do you That's think the thing. Like, there's so many roles. Do you think he's taking that call? Like, I can't imagine why he would say no. Like, is he, yeah. he doesn't want to dilute his brand, or they they think he's too right. big for the for the Marvel universe? There's also that whole worry. There was an actual. Uh, article out not too long ago. I think it was last week about DiCaprio and joining like the Star Wars world. And it's like how he would be too big of a celebrity though. They almost cast him in, I think it was in one of the newer spinoffs. I think it might have been Mandalorian, but they were like, yeah, he's just too big of a name to come in because all you see is Leo. But I mean, he's a great actor. It draws draws attention away, doesn't it? But I think that's kind of bullshit. That's kind of like a cop out. Like a good actor can transform into something else, you know? And if you're a good enough actor, of course, a lot of people see some people as just what it is. Think about a lot of these actors like Vince Vaughn. They're Vince Vaughn all the time, you know? But then there's actors like Daniel Day-Lewis, you know, like that, that they're not Daniel Day-Lewis all the time, you know? So it does, it just depends. And DiCaprio is the same thing. Yes, a lot of ways DiCaprio is DiCaprio, but he really goes there, you know? And he finds ways to change. Unlike a lot of people who just, you know, it, you see what you get, Will Ferrell, you know? I watched uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood yesterday uh, and – I haven't always been the biggest DiCaprio fan. I definitely walked out of that movie the first time I saw it thinking like DiCaprio is doing, he, he's, he has some fun. Like, cause uh, this is not even the subject of this particular, particular <laughs> okay. segment. Um, <laughs> but I, I think if he can, if he is in a, uh, if he's in a role where he can do a little bit of parody, like is a little bit of wink, wink. Uh, then maybe for for me anyway, way that's that's where he shines. So it would be great to see uh, bring bring Keanu in because uh, because if any series has a little wink wink to it in the Marvel continuity, Loki man, that's that's what it's all about. They did it with with She Hulk, right? They went they went yeah. completely crazy, like broke the smashed the fourth wall. Um, so oh I yeah, see with the whole Kevin something. thing. 
yeah, I can see them doing something really clever with uh, with that with Loki too, especially considering mm -hmm. that these uh, that these time threads ultimately have no consequence. They can create them and just slap it down. We're never going to go back to that one. Like if if that's the way they want to do it, it's kind of a free. It's kind of a carte blanche for the writers, right? Yeah, but but is Kang though? My question though is too. Yeah, that's true. Like they can just. You know, it doesn't really matter at this point. Anything can happen. They can wipe it. That timeline is gone. That person dies there. It's like whatever. But is Kang a good enough villain? Like you, you probably seen the trailer, Mike, for Quantum Mania, right? So do yeah. you think that you think that Kang seems brutal enough? You think that he's a Thanos level? And you saw He Who Remains. Do you think that he's big enough to be the next big bad? I don't know. I mean, Kevin Feige is in control, right? Yeah. I, so I believe he thinks so. I think he's. I think he's. I think he's got a, a good enough vision for what the broad strokes are going to be. That even if, if at any point a you know he wasn't a tough enough villain for us, they would be able to pull a narrative out of it that made it you know impactful and fun, which I think is the the Marvel brand more than anything. Yeah, and and honestly, all I can say is Ant Man's going to be fucking awesome. That's all I can say. Um, <laughs> But anyways, Jake, do you, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was, I got, I got that, I got that, uh, in, in the theater at going to see it, uh, when it first came out, they, you know, cause I was, cause I went to see the movie at freaking nine 30 in the morning and they're like, well, you're one of the first 20 people. Here you go. Here you nice. go. Take the shirt. <laughs> Very nice. That's awesome. Uh, Jake, do you know much about Kang? Do you think he's going to be a big deal or do you think that he's just not as strong as Thanos? I know nothing about him. Like <laughs> yeah. zero. Zero. I feel like that's the thing about him. He's kind of like out of nowhere. I guess people are saying, like, I didn't know much about him before this either. So I'm excited to see. I guess that's kind of nice. It's like a clean slate, right? You really don't know what you're going to get. And with sure. all this multiverse stuff, it sounds like he like dominates it. So it might be fun a way to wrap it all up into the secret war world, which is going to be the best when we get there. If you know anything about the think, Secret Wars. I don't think that your average uh, consumer, me included, had any idea about, about Thanos at all when, uh, you know, when they started making movies about him and look how that turned out. Yeah, right. and it worked really well. You yeah. know, Big Bad. And they started, yeah, they, they, yeah. Did, they did the same thing. They were showing him early on at the end of the, I think it was the end of Avengers 1, they showed him the end credits. And they just showed like a, like a five, ten second thing. And then they show a little bit in the second one, the third, you know, so it kind of was like hinting at him coming for a long time, which is what Marvel does. The same they've been doing with, with Kang, you know, he who remains kind of talking about him here and there. And I, and it would be a while till we get to the actual Kang movie. And I know he's an Ant-Man, but his actual big, big Avengers movie, we got multiple years until that comes out. So plenty of time to build them up even more to make him the biggest bad in the universe. They can so do we'll it. See. I believe. Yeah, I believe in it too. What's everybody think out there about about Loki season two? Are you excited about it? Are you excited about Kang being there? And do you think that he's a good big bad, or do you think that he's a little pussyfoot? Let us know, and we're gonna move on. <laughs>